Hi everyone, I've had a few requests to do a video about punctuation. So here it is. You might know already that punctuation is part of the assessment objective, assessment criteria for the exam, and you need to show that you can use a range of punctuation effectively and accurately. So I've got some top tips here for how you can show the examiner that you're doing that. So first of all, we're going to look at semicolons. So you might think, oh, I don't know how to use a semicolon and I never need a semicolon. And you can get through life quite well, really, without ever using a semicolon. That is true. However, they are quite impressive to examiners. And also there are some really simple rules you can learn about how to use them. So you can just sprinkle one or two into your writing and impress the examiner. OK, so. Obviously, this is what they look like, that little row of them there. And I'm going to show you how they're used. So if you have a look at this sentence here, you can see I love ladybirds. I hate snails. So hopefully you have spotted that that isn't a sentence. It, you do need some punctuation in there. So what you could do is separate this into um, two sentences. I well, that's supposed to be a full stop. It went a bit weird. I love ladybirds. Full stop. I hate snails full stop okay so you could do that or you could put something in there like but okay because you've got two sentences but they don't really match together do I mean they've got like a contrast between them haven't they okay um, and so you might have guessed that instead of putting a full stop or instead of putting back, well, you've got two sentences which are kind of linked like that. Um, but they are actually, I always see it like a little bit of a seesaw almost. So you've got the semicolon. Sorry, my writing's terrible on this screen. That's supposed to be a semicolon there. You can um, use it to show that those two sentences that almost have that kind of but aspect between them or and between them that are sort of linked together. OK, so if you get anything in the exam where you're making some kind of comparison like that, instead of using but or just a boring old full stop, you could use a semicolon. OK, so there's a easy way to do it. So let's have a look at one more example. She likes running. He prefers the sofa. OK, so that's an ideal place there you could put but you could put and you could put a full stop but let's put a semicolon in there obviously try and make your semicolons look a bit better than mine okay so moving on oh one more example here they are staying at home it's too cold to go out so sometimes you could use a semicolon here where you've almost got a because haven't you those two are linked they're staying at home because it's too cold to go out. They're staying at home and it's too cold to go out, something like that. But they're linked together, those sentences, aren't they? So you can pop a little semicolon in there. OK, so let's move on. Colons. These are my absolute favourite. And it's a bit geeky, isn't it, to have favourite punctuation, but I am an English teacher. So this is how I think about colons. OK. So Will Smith, right, bear with me, this will make sense. So here is Will Smith and he's showing off his beautiful wife there and he is saying, ta-da, okay. And to me, he's saying ta-da and his hands are looking like a colon, okay. And I think that the colon, you can think of it as the word ta-da. So what I want you to do is whenever you think of a colon, think of Will Smith saying ta-da and use it in your sentence like a ta-da. OK, so let's have a look at some examples before you think I'm totally mad. Right. He told her his secret. So what are you thinking? You're thinking, what's the secret? What's the secret? Ta-da. And then the secret. OK, so it kind of acts like a little bit, little bit of a drum roll, doesn't it, to the reader to get excited about what's going to come next. I'll tell you what I think. Well, then you're thinking, what? What are you thinking? Ta-da! They're all totally incompetent. I'll leave you to fill in who we're talking about there. He packed a rucksack of everything he would need. So maybe this is not quite so exciting, but you're thinking, OK, well, what, what does he need? 
Ta da! And there you have the list a spade, a long rope, seven nails, and two packs of salt and vinegar hula, vinegar hula hoops. So, even more curious now. Right, and last one. She sat down to enjoy her favourite meal, and you're going to be going, Tell me what the favourite meal is. I want more detail. So, ta da! Beans on toast. Okay, so it helps to kind of get your reader interested, show them. So, really, it's used to um, give more information, build on what's gone before and almost think about it like you're revealing a bit of an explanation or a bit more information. Okay, so commas. Now, commas are the most misused of punctuation and the most misuse is that people, we call it comma splice, which means that you, you people use them where they should be using a full stop or some other kind of punctuation to separate a sentence. Okay. So don't use them to separate sentences. So have a look at this long sentence here, which has been missed. Well, it hasn't been punctuated at all, but you'll see that actually there's lots of different sentences in here, lots of different clauses. I went outside. It was a really nice day. I saw three people on the bus. They looked miserable. So you can see we've got here four separate um, things that could be sentences on their own there because they've all got a subject and they've all got a verb. Okay, so you can't, what a lot of people would do, a lot of people make the mistake of punctuating this with commas. Okay. But that is incorrect. OK, so you could put full stops in between those. I went outside. It was a really nice day. I saw three people on the bus. They looked miserable, but it would get a bit boring, like all those same length sentences over again. So or you could do things like put I went outside and it was a really nice day. Full stop. I saw three people on the bus, but they looked miserable. Full stop. OK, or you could I went outside hyphen or semicolon. It was a really nice day. Full stop. Do you see what I mean? So you need to join together. That into maybe make that into two sentences with something like but or and or semicolons or hyphens between the, the two bits. OK, so but don't use commas. So how should you use commas then? Well, the best way to use commas to impress an examiner is to use them for extra information if you want. So as you see, I've done it there. Or lists, obviously. So everyone knows you can use them for lists. Um, so fine, but that's not really very sophisticated. If you want to show you can use really sophisticated commas, here, I'm going to show you some easy way to do that. OK, so here's a sentence. My aunt is coming to visit next week. So that makes sense on its own, doesn't it? That's a perfectly fine sentence. But as you can see, the cunning observation no people amongst you might have noticed there's a big gap in the middle because you could put, oh, hang on, I've done this wrong. My aunt, who is a firefighter and lives in Leeds, is coming to visit next week. So who is a firefighter and lives in Leeds is extra information. You can take that information out and the sentence still makes sense. And you can't have that information on its own. Who is a firefighter and lives in Leeds? It doesn't make sense on its own, does it? Because you're well, who, who are you talking about? OK, so using and have you, if you've noticed here, you've got information by putting the comma there. You don't need two commas because it's, it's not in the middle. It's at the beginning. OK, and after eating breakfast doesn't make sense on its own. So that's why that's the well, we call it a subordinate clause, but you don't really have to worry about that. Just worry that it doesn't make sense on its own and you need a comma if you're adding it onto the main sentence. OK, so she decided to give it another try. Which turned out to be a great decision. OK, so this is showing you that you can have this extra information at the end instead of at the beginning. OK, and again, she decided to give it another try. Makes sense on its own which turned out to be a great idea. You couldn't put that just on its own, could you? Because you'd be like, well, what's which referring to? It doesn't make sense. Which turned out to be a great decision. So you're adding a little bit of an opinion. So often it's really good to do a comma and then kind of give a little bit of an opinion, like unfortunately or luckily. Yeah, so you can put luckily 
I passed my exam. Luckily, comma, I passed my exam, yeah? Or you can put it at the end. And the last one, here we are, well, just to show you that you can obviously use it in the list. My best qualities are talent, skill, awesomeness, and modesty. Okay, so you can see there, you just put the uh, comma between each item in the list. You don't need it in front of and. OK, some people put them in front of and that's called the Oxford comma. Some people think that it's important to do that. It's a big debate, but um, GCSE examiners aren't going to worry about that too much. So I think it's clearer not to put one in. All right. Top tips for the exam. So here are some ideas. So if you're thinking, oh, I'd like to be able to use some of these in the exam, but I don't think I'm going to remember those rules. What I recommend you do is almost like memorize these sentences and then use these or adapt them to whatever you're writing about. So in the nonfiction, if you're asked to do some kind of argument, some people agree, semicolon, some disagree. OK, easy. You can just change the names, you know, you could, instead of some people, you could put a name of a group of people or I agree, my sister disagrees or something. OK, I'll tell you what I think, colon, it's a fantastic idea. So that's a great way to introduce your argument. You could start off your fiction writing, let me tell you a story, colon. OK, so again, a good way to just sneak a colon in there. Here's a way that you can sneak in the, this um, extra information um, in between the commas. Chris Black, comma, spokesperson for the BBC, comma, said, this is outrageous. So this is really good because you get in your expert opinion, you've got your um, extra information commas, and you've got a bit of speech. OK, so marvellous. Ticks a few boxes, that one. Obviously, you change it to be appropriate to whatever you were writing about. In the end, fortunately, the result was favourable. OK, so again, you put your you put some extra information in there. In this case, it's your opinion, fortunately. OK, and here we've got a little list. And you might have spotted it's our old friend, the rule of three. It's unacceptable, unfair and unjust exclamation mark okay so that's another good way to kill a few birds with one stone because you've got your rule of three and you've got showing that you can use your punctuation successfully okay so i hope that's been helpful um good luck with your punctuation in the exam